Today, I'm going to share my five tips for how to get your car ready for the spring drives. And stay till the end where I'll share a bonus tip and a video. Hey everyone, this is Andy, professional performance car driver with a passion for well-engineered cars and driving with friends on mountain roads. On this channel, I share with you my driving experiences and bring videos on new gear and car reviews. For those of you like me who live in those colder, snowier climates, we can't wait to get our cars back out on the road. But before we do, it's a good idea to make sure our cars are ready to go. So here I will share the five things I do with the RS to make sure it's ready for the spring mountain drives. Oh, and by the way, a quick note. If you're a gearhead or a DIY person, this video's not for you. Tip number one, tires. Probably the most important thing between you and the road. So we wanna make sure that our tires are in good shape. So a few things to check here. One is to check on a tri tire depth. Wow, that was hard to say. So probably a, a safe depth is 630 seconds, but on some ultra high performance tires, 530 seconds is probably okay. And I'm talking uh, 630 seconds of an inch, just so that's the measurement, right? And that's the tire uh, depth. Um, uh, 430 seconds is probably getting to a point where you need to keep a close eye on them. Maybe you'll need to replace them soon. If you get down to 230 seconds, you need, re need to replace those puppies right away. So how do you measure this? There are, they, there are tire depth gauges. Um, you can get an inexpensive one. It kind of looks like a, a little needle pin thing. They sell them at auto parts stores are relatively inexpensive, like four bucks or something like that. Or you can go up and get a fancy digital one if you want to spend $25. But that's something that I would check. Okay, the other thing you can do um, regarding your tire wear is to look for the tire wear indicators, right? These are little horizontal bars that lay uh, deep within the tread. So if this is the tread, there's a bar that lays in here. Um, and as that tread, as your tread begins to wear, that bar starts coming to the surface. That's another quick visual for not putting a tire depth gauge um, on the tire. The other thing you want to check around the tire is for what I call dry rot. And this is where you start seeing cracking, whether it's along the edges or even in between the tread, like down inside, you'll see some cracking in there. And this can happen, especially as you get older tires where maybe you're not driving a lot of miles and these tires are getting older, they're sitting around for a long time. Um, you could have a car that's sitting around, you know, you say, oh, it's only got 2000 miles on it. But if the car is four or five years old, those tires need to be replaced. Um, inflation, uh, tire inflation is another important uh, component. So here you can check uh, the door jam of your driver's side on your car, or you can check your owner's manual to see what the um, recommended tire pressures are. So depending on where you were at the end of last year and depending on how much you're driving now, um, your tire pressures may be off. So what I do is I typically set that tire pressure to the stock pressure. So whatever's on the door panel for cold, uh, cold just means you know you haven't been out driving your car for a few hours, um, checking that cold tire pressure. So that's another thing that I would check. So for tire inflation, I do recommend you get yourself a decent tire gauge. What I mean by decent, that really means accurate. I don't always trust those tire pressure monitoring systems that all new cars have, like in your dash in your car. Um, go out and get yourself a good one. I like the Longacre brand. I'll put a link in the description and you can go out and see them. You can spend a little, and I mean, you could spend all, you know, like two, three hundred dollars on a tire pressure gauge. They do different things, so don't get all excited. Um, and most of you don't need uh, that type of a uh, tire gauge, but I, I would get that tire gauge. Air compressor to fill up tires with air, that's your call if you want to spend the money on that. Um, I've used air, those and I've used uh, bicycle air pumps. If you have a bicycle air pump, I mean, you know, typically only need to add a pound or two. It works just fine if you have one of those um, laying around. 
The other thing to do is tire rotation. So find out the last time you had your tires rotated on your car um, and it may be time to do that. I think a good rule of thumb is probably five, 7,000 miles to do a tire rotation. But here's an important note. Not all cars can have their tires rotated um, and there's different uh, manufacturer recommendations. Like on the RS for instance, I really can't rotate the tires on the RS, right? The front size and the rear sizes are different and you start getting tires that are unique to a specific side of the car. Um, so it gets really complicated if you wanna do it. There are ways, I'm not gonna get into that here, uh, but do check your owner's manual and if that needs to be done, I would suggest get the tires rotated. If you need to replace tires, so now you're gonna put brand new tires on your car. If you need to replace tires, I would drive about 150 miles or so on those new tires before you start driving really spirited. Um, those tires will have, you know, I'll say like a film on them. And if you start driving real spirited right away, you're going to, um, they're gonna be a little slippery. So do dri drive on those for about 150 miles before you start driving spirited. So um, those are kind of the key things to wrap up on tires. Tip number two, brakes and rotors. So hey, we need to be have our grip on the road with the tires, but we sure as heck need to be able to stop when we need to with our brakes. So another thing to make sure to check is your rotors and your brake pads. Now the rotors, there's all kinds of indicators when these things are starting to go, whether it's cracks, um, etc. But rotors, if, if we're not, again, I'm not addressing the folks who are on the track and doing things like that. If you're just driving, normal driving, rotors last a really long time, minimum of 30 and probably up to 70,000 miles or more. But nonetheless, it's good to get them checked. Brake pads, on the other hand, those will wear a little bit um, sooner. You know, they'll, they'll wear a little more frequently than the rotors will. And I know Porsche is kind of known for a little bit softer pads, uh, but, and there are, pad indicators like these devices these tools you can use i'm not going to suggest you go out there and start uh you know measuring your own brake pads unless you're comfortable with that fine great do that otherwise here's a good thing to take to your local shop your preferred shop or your dealer to get those checked but do check your brakes and rotors tip number three brake fluid and coolant fluid so here's a chance to uh, here's the time to check your fluids as well. We've been talking about brakes and stopping power. The other piece is brake fluid. So here, what you want to check for, number one, is you want to check the level, right? You know, look at the level in the reservoir to make sure the level is good, but you also want to have the brake fluid checked for its boiling point. And a lot of times this will be referred to as like water in the line because you, you get um, water uh, with the brake fluid heating and cooling, etc. You can get some uh, water that builds up. So if that boiling point becomes too low, you probably have too much water in your brake fluid and it's time to get it changed. Again, if you're doing regular service on your car, your dealer should have information and records, uh, but nonetheless, um, get it checked out. And then the other piece here is your coolant, right? Last thing we wanna do is be driving all spirited, having a blast buzzing around in our car overheats on us. So get, uh, get that checked for, again, it's level and condition of that coolant. If you had it done right before the winter, like right before you went into the winter season and you weren't driving your car, like, you know, 2000 miles a month, I would think the coolant's probably okay. But, you know, peace of mind, uh, I would get it checked out. Tip number four, wheel alignment. Uh, if you've had the tires change, I definitely recommend you get a wheel alignment done. That you should do automatically just to um, help ensure that you get good longevity out of your tires. Um, so wheel alignment, uh, again, this is probably something that you're not going to do at your house, at least for the folks that this video is intended for. <laughs> so um, go take that to your dealer and get that alignment done. So that's just ensuring, again, that we've got proper alignment, we get good wear on our tires. If you want to get into a wheel alignment, I'm at, I'll put a link below that will uh, share all the elements of an alignment and you can read up on that. Um, it is provided by Tire Rack. 
Uh, and then you, you just want to make sure that you're getting some good even wear on those tires. So step number four, wheel alignment. Tip number five, torque your nuts. So here you want to check your, uh, the torque of your lug nuts on your car, right? Most cars have um, five lug nuts. So here, lug nuts. So here you want to check that those things are tight. Um, a torque wrench, a lug nut torque wrench, um, you could pick up at like a Lowe's even. They run about $60. I think a decent one run you about 60 bucks. And essentially you'll put those on there. And as you tighten, um, once you set, there's a dial to set. Once you tighten, you'll hear a click sound and that'll tell you that they're at that right torque. But you know, last thing again, you don't want to be driving down the roads and woohoo, my wheels are going to go, 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 You know, and those things um, come off your car. Uh, I know those of you out there with center locks, you're probably not watching this video, but if you have center lock wheels, like I do on the RS, it's probably a good idea to check those out too, especially if you haven't had them done for a while. I think in some cases, check the owner's manual though. It's probably not a bad idea to um, like undo those, take them off, clean all that paste, you know, the Molly paste that's on there, clean that off, put new paste on, and then put the wheel back on, retorque it, um, just to make sure everything is like okay. Um, so th those are some things regarding uh, torquing your nuts. Okay, and here's the bonus tip. And the bonus tip is visualization. So we use this a lot on the track, but this is basically where you sit down, pretend you're sitting behind the wheel of the car, you can close your eyes, and you, know, you steer and you drive whatever road, in this case it would be like a track, remembering where we are on the track, where to turn in, braking, gas, even use your feet um, and just do some visualization. Uh, those of you that may have race simulators, if you have a simulator at home, obviously you've been doing this already, probably for the winter, that's how you're having some fun, is um, you can use simulators as well. And the other thing you can do to check out is um, up at the link above here, the pop out, look at my video for how to drive the Cherahela Skyway. It's, I don't know, it's a 20 minute video or so where I just walk through where I'm looking and how I'm driving this particular road. But if you wanna kind of get yourself uh, ready there is, you know, just practice some visualization, look at some car control. Uh, I'll share that in an upcoming video talking about car control uh, and get yourself ready. Just basically just practice uh, and get yourself kind of geared up and ready to go. So there you go. There's a couple of bonus tips for you. Following these five tips will ensure your safety and be sure that you're ready to go on those mountain drives. As I said throughout this video, you can do these checks yourself if you're comfortable and you're a little handy, or you can take it to your preferred shop or dealer to get it done. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. I hope you found this helpful. If you do, give it a thumbs up, like the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. As I build more subscribers, I can bring some more content, especially the car reviews. Um, I can bring some more content to the channel. So those of you that have subscribed already, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And as always, stay healthy and stay safe.